Hi everyone, uh, welcome to a small tutorial about how to use the uh, spline tools to create uh, great shapes in 3D Studio Max. Uh, this was a request I had, so let's just get started really quick. Um, going through the basics on the right hand side menu, we see that we have the create menu here. Now normally when the create menu is open, uh, we're already in geometry mode, and that's where we can create things like boxes, cones. Uh, we can go down this drop down menu here. Uh, go from standard to extended primitives and create uh, more complicated objects, uh, particle systems, compound objects, etc., etc. But the menu beside that, we actually have our shape tools. Now, the shape tools, they start off with splines. And what splines can do is that you can actually just draw out shapes and create meshes with them. So a quick example is I'm going to use the line tool. And the line tool can help me just basically draw out any shape I want. Uh, and it's great for creating prototype 3D models. So let's say I want a wooden sword in my game. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to left click after like, the line tool when it's blue means it's, it is active. And I will start left clicking, <clears throat> sorry, in my 3D Studio Max scene. And you'll notice I can keep left clicking. So just left click, move your mouse. Uh, you can let go of the left click, obviously. Left click, left click, left click, left click. And you can create the basic sword shape that you want. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like that. Now, as soon as you're about to left click on the yellow dot, or at least near the yellow dot, it's going to ask you if you want to close the spline. This will finalize the spline object and basically uh, shut down um, working on the spline. Um, you can either choose yes or no. If you choose no, all it does is it will continue working. Uh, and if you choose uh, yes, it will obviously um, close the spline completely. So let me just do this real quick again. Create a sword. That, 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 that. Magical. So I'm going to close spline, and you'll see that it actually closes the entire spline. And if you push W, E, or R for the move rotate scale tools, you can actually move that around just like that. Um, so that if we continue to actually produce the 3D model, sorry about that brother break, uh, the fire alarm just went off my building. If we continue to want to make this model and finalize it, we're happy with the shape. Uh, we can actually go to uh, the edit menu, look in line. You'll see we have vertex, segment, spline. And you can go to rendering, the rendering menu drop down here. And you can actually adjust uh, this to enable render in renderer, which, which means if you render it, it'll actually have a shape to it. Or you can push enable in viewport. What that does is it actually uh, creates a 3D mesh around your spline. So right now it's on radial mode. And you'll notice if we change these options, it will create the shape. And if we go to rectangular, it creates like a box cutout, almost like a cookie cutter uh, type object. And we can change some of the settings, play around with the width. You know, make it really thin if we want to, give it a thickness for the shadowing. You can change the angles, uh, which come into more handy later on. Uh, change the aspect ratios. Turn off smoothing or create auto smooth, which will smooth it correctly. Uh, the interpolation uh, changes the steps. If it's more, um, if we go into polygon mode here, you'll see if it's not optimized, uh, it creates a whole set of series of polygons for us, which can be great because it acts like a normal mesh. Uh, however, you can also just optimize it and it'll reduce the amount of polygons uh, for you to play with, which makes it more uh, accurate to the way you built it out in the, uh, uh, with the spline tool. So now that we have our line and I'm going to just turn off enable in viewport, enable render. Now, if you right click on this, you can actually convert it to an edit mesh, edit poly, edit spline. Uh, if I go to edit mesh. You'll notice that it creates a thickness. Now, this is one single polygon. It is not a recommended way to create a finalized 3D model. However, if you go to Polygon and use your extrusion tool, it's good to create a temporary 3D model to use either as a template or something to quickly put in a video game. Um, you can also, I'm going to back up here, convert it to a spline again, which it just goes right back to it's creating a normal line, stuff like that. Um, and then we can enable this. And if we right click on it and convert this to an edit mesh, you'll notice that it just stays like that. It's a good edit mesh. It has good, uh, good edge flow here. And we can use this as sort of a rough outline of what we want to build. 
Um, a good thing to, uh, to learn about the line tool is that if you notice, like when we started making the sword, we were left clicking and created lines like this. And now that the rectangular menu is on, it'll always create rectangles. Now we were just left clicking, but if you left click and hold with your mouse after the first dot, you'll see, look at this, you'll notice that I can create curves now. So left click and hold, and you'll actually create curves. Left click and hold, left click and hold. And you can always go back uh, just to left clicking and create sharp edges again, and left click and hold. Now this is a great way to work on things like race tracks and stuff like that. You'll notice if I just go to the top view instead and just do this. We change the angle here by 90 degrees. Let's make that a little bit thicker. Actually, make it thinner like this. I'm going to turn off the optimize. I'm going to turn on adaptive mode, hopefully to make things a little bit smoother. And maybe delete a vertex or two. And rotate it. There you go. And now you have the basics of a racetrack, and now you can build around it. See, there's a lot of different uses of the line tool that you should think about. Making belts, for instance, uh, making like, these racetracks. You, you can make all kinds of stuff, hand wraps, that kind of thing. So I always recommend the line tool as a starting point, and then you can always right-click and convert it to a mesh if you uh, want to finalize it to put in the programs like Unity uh, and uh, stuff like that. And it keeps the polygon count relatively low. If I push uh, 7 on my keyboard, you can see... At the entire scene, uh, entire racetrack is only 1,800 polygons, and then we can unwrap that and then edit that how much we want. Um, that's a very basic of the line tool. Uh, if you have uh, the line tool and you want to use more of it, I recommend just looking at all the other options. There are just different ways to use the line tool. So now we have circles, and you can see they're all creating uh, the they're creating different objects, right? But if you look here, there's actually an option called Start New Shape Circle. So if I click off Start New Shape, you're going to notice that there's this circle's purple in the middle and highlighted. You'll see that they're both purple now. The new shapes I'm creating are actually a part of the shape that was last created. So if I close this, I right-click and close it, you'll notice that they're all purple. So you can create actually large shapes and like edit them all together. So we can just get some pretty nifty results by doing that and create awesome patterns. By doing this, create a cool hedge maze, maybe something. Don't forget, you can also change the angles of things 90 degrees, zero, change the width, change the height, change the length, etc. So, go ahead and play around with the line tool, create new parts of your mesh and stuff like that. And I'm sure you're going to have a great time with it. And I hope that it makes your 3D Studio Max modeling of more complicated objects just a little bit easier. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.